Hi guys, this lesson is going to be about the Industrial Revolution. Now, don't worry too much if you don't know what that phrase means. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to. So, your starter today is just to list how many pieces of technology you have used today. So, pause the video, do yourself a date, title and task, and write in the chat box the number of pieces of technology you've used today. Now, the Industrial Revolution is a specific period in history, in the 1800s, with huge technological change and a massive increase in the number of factories. As you can see in this picture below, it physically and economically changed England. And in this lesson, we're going to look specifically at how it changed High Wycombe. So this is a really cool site study. You're going to be seeing some pictures and you're going to learn about some stuff that you'll be very familiar with. And you'll get to learn about where it's come from. So can you now please pause this video and get down this definition? So the first thing we're going to do is learn a bit about what the Industrial Revolution was and how it looked. So to do this, you have seven questions and another YouTube video. So we will post this in the chat box for you. Um, while we're doing so, can you please just write down uh, these questions? So write down the questions and then play the other YouTube video when you're ready and have a go at answering them. your answers. Give yourself a tick if you got it right and correct any you may have missed off. And then in the chat box, please pop your score out of seven. So machines are powered by coal and it's this uh, black rock-like substance, but it burns really powerfully. And that is what often heats steam that turns the engine. Now, steam engines could do the work of 40 million people, so they're massively efficient. What did owning the rights to your ideas mean? It meant that people could make money. If you invent uh, the telephone, you can make money from it. If you invent a vacuum cleaner, you can make money from it. So that's where it comes from. And it's George Stevenson that invents the steam train, something we'll all be familiar with. The average working day is 12 hours. Now, you're probably sat there having to do five hours worth of online lessons, and I bet that feels quite tiring. But imagine 12 hours working and not very nice conditions. We're talking hot, sweaty, uh, very young children would work, you know, three or four years old because their little fingers could go in the machines and clean them out. I'll leave uh, the accidents to your imagination. Most people worked in factories in towns. Now, this is a massive change from what we've been looking at previously, because most people would have been farmers. But nowadays, uh, and in the Industrial Revolution, factories were the main place people worked. And roughly by 1860, there were over 10,000 miles of railway. So, a good amount. So again, pause the video. Tick and correct and type in your score to the chat box. So now we've learned about what the Industrial Revolution was like in general, we're going to look at what it does to High Wycombe, where something we're all very familiar with. So on the next slide, uh, there are going to be some sources about High Wycombe before, during and after the Industrial Revolution. You need to note down as many facts as you can. So as a minimum, it will be one fact per source. But, you know, if you're aiming high, why not push yourself to two or three facts per source? You can present this however you want. You can do it as a poster, you can do it as bullet points, you can do it as a table, mind map. We don't mind today. So source A. High Wycombe was a town that has a strong history of chair making. In 1796 there were, chair, there were 50 chair makers who lived in Wycombe and the surrounding areas, but by 1860 this number is 150. Source B. 
Between 1851 and 1871, the population of High Wycombe grew by 46%, purely because there are lots of jobs. So we'll see. West Wycombe was the first to get a train station in 1900. Soon after, Wickham Station was built, which connected Wickham to London, which made it easier to trade. So you could sell your chairs in London now very easily. Source D. This is an artist sketch of Wickham Workhouse. So people with no money or house could go there and do work in return for a bed and food. That sounds quite nice, but actually it's horrible. Uh, it's basically a prison. You're not allowed to leave. People literally died while working. And maybe just have a think about the building is massive. So what does that tell you about poverty in High Wycombe? Source E. 1830, a new way of making paper was invented. And the traditional paper makers were not happy because they would lose their jobs. So they met in secret and formed a plan. They broke into the new factories and destroyed the machines. Seven were sentenced to death, but this was changed to transportation to Tasmania. The Industrial Revolution meant people could travel around and see the conditions poor people lived in. This led to some people wanting to improve their lives, such as James Griffiths, who opened the first public library in Wickham. Back-to-back -back houses were created to house the large numbers of people. Often families lived in one room and there was no toilet. A health report in 1894 noted how horrible, dirty and cramped the houses were. The rye used to be owned by a family who grazed cattle there because so much of the surrounding area was sold to factory owners or was forest. And this final one I'm not going to read out to you because it's quite gruesome. This is about one of the accidents that a small child had in a factory. So if you would like to read it, you're more than welcome to. Uh, if you would prefer to just ignore it, that's fine. So pause the video now and you need one fact as a minimum per source. So you guys are now going to do a teacher sir to make sure we are keeping in line with our marking policy. So I'm asking you the question, was the industrial revolution good or bad? And we're asking you to do this in the style of appeal paragraph. So point, evidence, explain, link back to the question. But you're going to have to justify your opinion with facts. So you've just done loads of stuff to give you some information. We expect to see it all in one place with this. Now you're going to be asked to email this to us, so you might want to do this on a Word document or directly into an email, and I'll show you how to lay out that email next. So if you want to do it straight into an email, uh, you might just want to skip forward the video for a minute. So we're going to need three paragraphs to answer this question. One paragraph on why it was good, one paragraph on why it was bad, and a final paragraph on your opinion and why you think that. And if you fancy a challenge, uh, why are there different ideas, different interpretations on this issue? Why can't historians agree on whether the Industrial Revolution was good or bad? So this is going to take you about 15 minutes to do properly. We are expecting proper paragraphs separated with a line and lots and lots of historical evidence an explanation about whether this is or why your facts are good or bad. Now, between uh, me and Mr. Ferguson, we teach uh, about 170 of you. So it's really important when you email this to us, you do so in a very specific way. So the first thing you're going to do, uh, you can see here I've got an email up for you as a print screen. You're going to write in the correct address, whether it's to me, Miss Cox, or Mr. Ferguson. That's what you put in the to bit. In the subject, you're going to need to put your full name and your class code. And then just teacher, sir, so we know what we're doing with it. So full name, class code, and teacher, sir. And then it's in this bit here that you type your answer, or if you're uploading it as a picture or a document, that's fine. If you're uploading a picture, 
um, or a document, you're going to need that little paper clip symbol at the bottom in the middle. That's how you attach your document, but it must be clear. We must be able to read it. Okay, so that's what you're going to need to do. So pause the video and have a go at your question. And as always, to finish off the lesson, there is a show my homework quiz. So please now go to show my homework and do the quiz three times. 